welcome to the game plan online. Uh, this is a special edition which we're calling uh, Blast from the Past and uh, today we're uh, interviewing uh, 1995 Premiership player Remark Dale Lohman uh, and the Rovers had their uh, reunion for, for the uh, 95 Premiership um, on the weekend so thought it'd be time to catch up with Dale. Welcome mate. How are you going Nick? Thanks for having me here. No, not a problem mate. Good to have you here. Um, well, we just talked about the reunion to start off with, man. I imagine it would have been really good to, to have caught up with a lot of guys you hadn't seen for a long time and obviously part of something really special with. Yeah, there's sort of a, there's a few guys at the footy club Friday night, the under-11s were playing, so we sort of got there and they had a replay of the game going, so you know, a few yarns and a few drinks. And then uh, Saturday was, um, they, they had a tent set up for the day and most of them got in there. I was sort of team manager A grade on Saturday, so yeah. I didn't participate there much. But uh, yeah, it was good to see a lot of faces that come down for it and um, yeah, some more, I said some more yarns and a few people got up and spoke, but it was really good. So yeah. Do the stories get taller as, as the night go on? Uh, yeah, they the do, they get a bit yeah. more louder and a bit more, yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose <laughs> they get a bit more longer sort of thing, but um, I suppose one thing, it was 20 years ago, but you still remember a fair bit of what happened on the day at least yeah. and, you, and, the, and your teammates from that era, so. Yeah, that's no, awesome. So we'll talk about 95 itself, obviously um, Desi Camp was in his, I think his fourth year, and final yeah. year of coaching, yeah. it turned out to be. Um, how did the year go itself in the, in the lead up to the finals? You know, with Remark around, around the mark for most of the, most of the season. Yeah, we were yeah we were we were, we were at least the top three for most of the year. There was sort of um, Barmer locks in the equation a little bit as well, and um, uh, so yeah, it was a uh, we was a, a few players sort of in and out of the team during the year, but um, I suppose Rick Modder didn't play all all year. He, he had a significant impact on the year towards the end of the year, yeah. and um, but uh, yeah, so. We didn't actually beat Barmer at all during the minor round or in the, the first or the second semi when we played them, so we couldn't beat them. And um, then we uh, we just got in against Loxton in the prelim and then uh, grand finals history, I suppose, history, as they yeah. say. So yeah, yeah. We, we saved our best game to the last. For sure. That's the way to do it. And uh, you mentioned Rick Modra there, obviously the brother of Tony. Um, so what happened with Rick at the end of the year? Because uh, from what I understand it, he wasn't going to play in. The, he didn't play in the second semi and was offered a chance to play in the in the twos and turned that down. Yeah, look, there was a little bit of um, I suppose between him and Des, he didn't probably get to a few trainings here and there, and probably didn't wasn't committed to most of the season. So he had that offer, and then I suppose at the end it was probably I wouldn't say it was a shock move, but it was probably a move that probably most people might not have thought. Oh, well, we're just going to put him in regardless, and. Um, I suppose he, he let his footy do on the talking at the end of the year, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, he, did, yeah he finished at ninth a day yeah. and um, it was definitely a very good focal point and yeah. Uh, yeah, he swung around the goalposts a few times, he had a way out of time, so yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, now obviously no Snow Millard on the day, which obviously would have helped Rick's cause because yeah. I understand he kept him pretty quiet yeah. in the previous account. Yeah, yeah, I think that Snow um, broken jaw or something in the, like, just last part of that first um yeah, fire his own there. Teammates, I think. yeah, yeah. a bit of friendly fire but mm. um yes yeah, so that was a that was a big big plus i suppose for us uh, mm. not so good for barman at the time but um, yeah. they still had they had a couple of big boys johnny glass and it was he played there he was a, yeah. he was a he was like rico's a tower tower of a man but mm. um just on the day it just didn't sort of happen for barman yeah for sure now you guys actually only got the second spot by I look back in it by point oh three of a percent. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a hell of a lot, but um, looked like Waker were going to get it, yeah. and then, then they ended up getting knocked out first round. Yeah, so. yeah. So it was it was probably our um, I suppose ninety five was probably we had some good years leading up to that, and then it was was Des Kemp going to coach in in ninety five, and he said you know I think he, he said look give me a go, give me one more go, I'll give you a premiership and he actually said that to the committee and I thought, mm, okay, all right, so yeah, he probably dropped a couple of dollars to do it all, but like mm -hmm. he just, because the sort of man he is, his heart was in the right place and he just knew yeah. that he could deliver and at the end of the day we did deliver, so yeah. it was great, but yeah, it was definitely, a, yeah, sort of towards the end there was a top two, we were going to get in on that sort of thing, but um, mm -hmm. like I said, and then we were just lucky we fell in against Lockson at the last sort of, last hurdle, I suppose, yeah. and got through, yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about Des and uh, the way he coached, because he was a bit of a, he was a pretty popular figure, but he was also a bit of a polarising sort of figure as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, um, he, he, I suppose with his background with North Adelaide's and West Times and things like that, the time where he'd come from, he just, he knew one way to play and then mm -hmm. the group of players he had on the time, at that time, played the way he wanted to. Yeah. But um, I suppose, you know, four years and I suppose you're doing the same, I mean, I'm, yeah, you're doing the same thing for a lot of those years and... Um, but he just had, he just had the knack to just keep bikes, making sure they keep getting up, keep going. And um, his you know his philosophy was like, like we've got the ball, 
that I've got the ball, the umpire's got the ball, how do you react and just little things like that and yeah. just make sure you play a running, riding style of football and things like that. So, Good. And that's what we train for. We, we Towards the end of the season there, we were probably training harder than at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. We were doing lots of couple hundred runs after, even after training, 10, 200s on three or four times the league up to the finals just to, just to try and get a bit, a bit more of an edge. Yeah. And a lot of people probably thought, well, that's a bit mad. <laughs> yeah. But he just went back to the North Melbourne days. That's what they used to do through the 70s and they won a few phases as well. So yeah. little things he brought to the club just, just worked. Oh, it worked at the end, mm. didn't it? Yeah. yeah, sure. Mm. Now, I'm just going to run through a few of the, a few of the players um, that were involved in that team because yeah, you had a star of the team. But um, obviously, you had Chopper Hanley come mm. across from. Yeah. Uh, but where was he playing before that? Uh, so he just, just finished the league for you at Central District. Yeah. So he wasn't actually. He wasn't actually really going to come here. It was just by chance that um, something to do with his with his job that was on the move a bit, and um, he actually was he was actually trying to get John Person to go to the Central Districts for the <laughs> following year, but that didn't happen. And Chopper ended up coming here, and Chopper knew Des from SNFL days. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just a, a guy that was the wrong day, talked all day, and just got likes going. Yeah, and obviously BOG in the grand final. Yeah, too, yeah, he was uh, yeah he had a way out of time too. There was one occasion there he was sort of on the end of a few handballs and running into the goal square and uh, Bruce Eglinton I think was his opponent of the day and yeah. Bruce Chobble just sort of had the ball and like ten and a half I've got up next to Bruce Eglinton ran straight past from the goal and Chobble's like you yeah, better kick this and he was <laughs> yeah. that close so that was a, that was one of the talking points Saturday night. Well, yeah, he didn't say that day but the, <laughs> the guy ran straight past him. Jeez, he was a bit more close than I thought. Got a bit lucky there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good. Uh, went back and then obviously Greg Dempsey who ended up I think the next year went down to Westies and maybe had spent a bit of time yeah, on the Adelaide Yeah, he went on the list. I think when he he was um, just a, wasn't very quick but just I suppose it was like a bit of Greg Williams just a handle. He'd just get the ball, yeah. flick it up with one hand and a running player bang mm -hmm. off you go. So yeah. always on the move, always on the move demo was but just his hands was probably so apart from a lot of players in our team. Yep, excellent. Uh, Aaron Gill, 16 years yeah, old, had yeah, a bit of a Aaron job Gill. on Snoopy, I reckon. Yeah, he was on the Wrestling Rovers there for most part of the day, and then I think just in the last, probably the last quarter, we just a few of those guys got let loose and came up on the ball and had a, and had a game. But, you know, 16 year old playing in Agro Grand Final back then, where there was a lot of men playing. Mm. You know, back then, I consider there was a lot of men playing. That's not taking away starting from guys playing this year, but mm. like you say, you got the Modras, you got Trot Rowney running around, you know, so it's uh, just men, you know, and then yeah. like they had Bewackers and Burnses and then sort of Mick Beach running around mm. as well, so it's, um, yeah, good. And then I just got quickly, we, I mean, some of the other guys that were playing were, you know, end up being out and out stars as well, you know, Robbie Bonner, yeah. um, John Personos, uh, big, the Venables boys, Reggie, uh, yeah. Brenton and, and Tony, so yeah. um, and it, was a, it was a really good side at the time. Now we'll just quickly go through the grand final itself. Um, was Remark on top all day? Uh, I think, I think Barra might have got the first couple of scores on the board, but then we sort of we got motoring, and then I think it was pretty even at quarter time, and yeah. then just after that the just gate sort of opened and fast flowing game like we watched it a few times Saturday, yeah. sort of during the day, and then later on night we watched it again. It even seemed a bit quicker, yeah. but um, <laughs> Uh, just a fast flying game, like one end to the other to the back, an interception, and off you go again. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't this, wasn't a lot of mark kick footy as they sort of, as it sort of could have been or should have been, but yeah. just a lot of handball, a lot of running. That was that was both ways, but we just seemed to finish off mm -hmm. a lot better at the time. And how did you go back if you kicks on the day? Oh yeah, got, got a couple, mate. I'm yeah. probably looking back, I think, geez, I probably could have kicked that guy, or that guy, had a couple <laughs> shots there. But at the end of the day, it didn't really, doesn't really matter who kicks the goals we got yeah. through. But yeah, that no, was it. Was just a good day, yeah. So awesome. um, yeah, so it was. It was sort of wasn't really much, not a lot of one-on-one -on -one sort of stuff, but it just seemed to be a, a game that was that to and fro from one end to the other to yep. one end to the other. So yeah, very good. And just lastly, mate, the celebrations afterwards. I understand yeah. they were yeah. pretty epic. Oh yeah, well we um, well, you know, you, you both, the siren, the siren goes, and I remember there was a few of us standing there, and Charlie Howley was one of the first guys that was was around that year, and he always says the first guy I've was you, know, and things like that. So that mm -hmm. memory that sticks in his mind. Yeah. And um, but yeah, we sort of went back and. We had like a big uh, band playing on a truck there, yeah. outside there, and nice. just never seen as many people there. Yeah. And might not, I don't reckon, for a long time, but mm -hmm. um, it was just an awesome night, yeah. And we spilled on to the next day, of course, and probably for a few yeah. days after. Yeah, so, right. yeah, we sort of, I uh, know John Person as I had probably the couple of way out hairdos back then, and then yeah. I think come Monday, Tuesday, it was all cut off and short and sort of thing. <laughs> so, you know, we just had a bit of a good time there, we'll say. As is the norm these yeah, days. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good, yeah. Very good. Well, thanks for coming on, mate. We really, ah, really appreciate yeah. you coming in to have a chat. It's always good, good to have a look back at these sort of things. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, I mean, 20 years ago, like mm -hmm. I said before, it's just 
It always sticks in your memory the ones that you remember the most. So yeah, that's it. No one sort of sometimes remember who loses the day, but um, we won, and it was just good that we could get together a few of us and go from there. So Beautiful. a few guys travelled from a fair way away to come here, which was fantastic. That's excellent. Mm. No worries. Thanks for coming on, Dave. No worries, mate. Thank you very much. See you next time. Yep. Thank you.